All right, guys, welcome to the second half of my lesson on distance and midpoints. Here we're going to introduce midpoint formula just on a number line to start out uh, so we, we can kind of get used to this concept. But if we've got a point A located at this coordinate x1 and we've got a point B located at this coordinate x2 and the midpoint has a coordinate that's equal to x1 plus x2 divided by 2. And that means it's going to be exactly halfway between those two points. It also means that it's going to create two segments that are congruent to one another. Because if that's exactly halfway in between, then it must cut this segment into two equal halves. Okay, what's this mean? Where does this come from? Um, when otherwise would we add two things together and divide by two? Are we not just, isn't that how we take the average of things? If we have two items, we add them up and we divide by two, then we found the average of them or what is halfway between them. So if you want to think of midpoint like that, uh, it, uh, geometrically equivalent to the algebraic concept of average, that might help you visualize it. And that might help you remember what we do here. We take the coordinates of the endpoints, we add them together and we divide by two. And you will end up with the average, what's halfway between them. So can we try an example here? Could we use the number line to find the midpoint of BG? Okay, well, the midpoint, oh, we'll call it M, midpoint is, it's going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2. That's our midpoint formula. Let's call this x1. Let's call this x2. Okay, and we're going to basically find the average of the endpoints. Okay, so negative 5 plus 3 divided by 2. All right, what's negative 5 plus 3? Negative 5 plus 3 gives me negative 2. So this is going to be negative 2 divided by 2. And what's negative 2 divided by 2? That's going to be negative 1. Okay, so that's telling us that our midpoint is right there. Visually, does it look correct? Could we check it? I should have the same number of spaces between B and M that I have between M and G. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's our midpoint. All right, let's do one more. This would be a good place if you want to pause the video and try this one yourself. They want us to find the midpoint of MN. So I'm going to call this X1. I'm going to call this X2. Uh, I'm going to say our midpoint is somewhere in here. Since we've already used them, I'm going to call it point uh, R. Okay, so R should be, we should find it at x1 plus x2 over 2. All right, let's see what we get here when we plug these in. x1 is negative 6 plus negative 3 over 2. Okay, this time both of our coordinates are negative. It's going to work whether both coordinates are negative, both are positive, or one's negative and positive. It doesn't matter. It's still going to work out. You're still looking for the average of the two to find the point that's halfway between them. So negative 6 plus negative 3 gives me negative 9. So this is negative 9 over 2. And hopefully you can simplify that and recognize that that is negative 4 and 1 half which would, it's going to be easier to mark on a number line when you put it in as a mixed number. You don't always have to convert answers to mixed numbers, but sometimes it's good because you want to plot that at negative four and one half. Okay, and that makes sense. Do we have, is that the midpoint? Did we divide M in, N into two equal segments? It looks like we have one and a half units from M to R. And we have one and a half units from R to N. So that is indeed our midpoint. Okay, so now let's take our midpoint formula onto the coordinate plane. And here we can see if we've got a point A with coordinates x1, y1, and a point B with coordinates x2, y2, then we can find their midpoint. The midpoint is going to have an x and a y coordinate to it. And the x-coordinate you will find by taking x1 plus x2 over 2. Essentially, we're still doing the same thing. We're finding the average 
of the x coordinates of the endpoints. And then to find the y coordinate of the midpoint, we're just going to take the average of the endpoint's y coordinates. Okay? Why does this work? Well, you can see, you can visually see, if we were to drop this line down here, and we found the midpoint of this line, it would lie right there. And if we were to extend this line over, and then find the midpoint of this line, it would pass right through that point. And where we extend these two to intersect, they're going to hit right there. I know what you're saying. Mr. Rogers, prove it to me. Prove to me that that formula works. How could we do that? How could we prove that all of this, if we plug it all in, we're going to get exactly halfway between? Well, you could prove it using the distance formula that we just learned. I'm not going to I'm not going to run through the proof on this, but you can see it. I could break this into two triangles, and I've got a delta x and a delta y here. You'll see my delta x here in this particular case is 4. My delta y here is 3. Here my delta x happens to be 4, and here my delta y happens to be 3. And hopefully you will agree that if we plug those identical delta x's and delta y's, into the distance formula, we will find that these two segments have exactly the same length as well. And once you've proven that that segment is the same distance, the same length as that segment, then you've proven that this point must lie at the midpoint of AB. All right, let's try an example on the coordinate plane here. It wants to find the coordinates of M the midpoint of segment RS. If point R is located at negative 1, 4, and point S is located at negative 14, 12. Now, if you're catching on to a theme here, you'll know that it's handy to label these coordinates x1, y1, and x2, y2. You probably did this in Algebra 1 when you're working on slopes of lines. Um, and we're going to use it again on distance, midpoint, and slopes, again, in geometry. So that's a good habit to get into. And also, of course, have the graphic check. So let's go ahead and plot these points. R is at negative 1, positive 4. Good. There's R. We're at negative 1, positive 4. Okay. And then point S is located at negative 14, 12. I'm going to go over 14. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Then up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And that is where my point S is at negative 14, 12. Good. All right, so let's go ahead and figure out where the midpoint is located. I'm graphically going to connect these so that when we're done we can check and confirm that we have the right answer. If you end up calculating the midpoint of this line segment and it's over here, well, there's pretty much an algebra mistake in there somewhere or a, some uh, an operation mistake in there somewhere. So it's good to have that graphical check. Let's go ahead and say that M, our midpoint, must B at x1 plus x2 over 2. That's the average of the x-coordinates. Will give us the x-coordinate of the midpoint. And the y-coordinate will be at y1 plus y2 over 2. I'm going to take the average of the y-coordinates. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in what we've got. x1 plus x2. Negative 1 plus negative 14. Okay, watch those signs. I encourage you to write these out and do them in a couple of steps. Skipping steps here often leads to sign errors, which you'll be disappointed when you, when you uh, end up with a wrong answer. And y1 is 4 plus y2 is 12 over 2. Okay, let's go ahead and clean that up. Negative 1 plus negative 14 is negative 15. So I get negative 15 over 2, and 4 plus 12 is 16, 16 over 2. Now let's go ahead and clean it up a little further. Negative 15 over 2 is negative 
I do love this number. This is a beautiful number. Fractions are a beautiful thing. And there's nothing improper about improper fractions. But if you're going to plot it on the coordinate plane, you may want to turn it back into a mixed number. And 16 halves is, of course, 8. Okay, let's go ahead and plot this and see. If it ends up over here, we've got to check our work. Negative 7.5. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a half. And then I'm going to go up eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. My goodness. Look at that. There's our point M, negative 7.5, comma, eight. And I have that built in graphical check that it lands on the line. And you don't have to, but you can see that you could do a little distance formula here and prove that both of those segments are congruent to each other. All right, let's do another example here. This is a great place to pause the video if you want to try this and see how you're doing on your own. Uh, it's a great habit to watch these videos while you have some graph paper in front of you and you can try an example yourself and really get a good sense of if you're uh, understanding the material. They want us to find the coordinates of M which is the midpoint of segment RS, if point R is located at 8, negative 6, and point S is located at negative 7, negative 8. And I encourage you, no matter how many of these problems you've done, read them carefully, because the next example, I'm going to throw in a little twist. But I see that R and S are the endpoints of this line, that line segment that we're talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and label this as X1, Y1. And S here I'll call X2, Y2. Good. And then I'm going to go ahead and plot these points. R is at 8, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in the X direction. And down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Good. There's point R. And, yep, I'm going to write those coordinates down because we're going to be doing lots of problems this year where you use the coordinates in the algebra. So it's a good habit to have them handy. And S is located at negative 7, negative 8. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh, excuse me. Negative 7, negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then down 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And there is our point S at negative 7 negative eight okay and i'm going to draw this segment because when i get my midpoint i can plot it on there and visually see whether i did this problem right or not i'm going to find my midpoint do you guys remember the midpoint formula the, the coordinates of m are going to be x1 plus x2 over 2 that gives us the x coordinate of m and the y-coordinate of m is going to be y1 plus y2 over 2. Again, just taking the average of those coordinates of the endpoints. Let's go ahead and plug in. Our midpoint is, I really don't actually need an equal sign there. You'll see it written like this sometimes, but you really don't uh, need it like that. You can just say m is x1 plus x2, 8, plus negative 7 over 2. And y1 is negative 6, plus y2 is negative 8, over 2. Good. Can we clean that up a little bit? 8 plus negative 7 is the same thing as 8 minus 7, right? It's going to be 1 over 2, 1 half. Good. And negative 6 plus negative 8 is going to give me negative 14, right? So we get negative 14 over 2. Good. All right. Let's clean that up a little bit more. That one half looks good. Nothing more I can do with that. But negative 14 over 2 is negative 7. Good. Let's go ahead and plot this. I'm going to go to x is one half. Y is negative 7. I'm going to go over one half, down 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That looks pretty good. Okay. Okay, here's a real good example of why we need to read these problems carefully. They want us to find the coordinates of F if M 
negative 5, 5 is the midpoint of FG, and point G is located at negative 4, negative 2. Okay, this time they're giving us the midpoint and one endpoint. So don't jump in and label this x1, y1 and x2, y2. If you want, you can call this x2, y2. But what we're trying to find is x1, y1. We're trying to find f. Let's just go ahead and say, what are the coordinates of f? Well, they're gonna be x1, y1. And we're given the midpoint. Okay, let's plot these coordinates so we can make some more sense of this. M is at negative five, five. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, and up five. One, two, three, four, five. Here's point M at negative five, five. Good. And point G is located at negative four, negative two. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, down two. There's point G at negative four, negative two. Okay, where do you expect point F to be? If that's the midpoint, and this is one endpoint, I expect point F to be somewhere up here. And if I don't get an answer that's in this vicinity, I'm going to be highly suspicious, and I'm going to go back and check my work, right? So how are we going to solve this? There's a, because our coordinates are integers, there's a graphical way to solve it. And there's an algebraic way but I encourage you to learn the algebraic way because you won't always be working with integer coordinates and the integer coordinates are without integer coordinates it's very difficult to come up with a graphical solution so let's go ahead and say that remember our midpoint is negative 5 comma 5 and don't forget midpoint midpoint is also x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. So I'm getting a little cram, cramped in there. So they give us this. We know x2 and y2, and we've got to find x1 and y1. Well, it turns out I can extract two equations from this. I can say the x-coordinate of my midpoint is this, and it's negative 5. Negative 5, therefore, equals x1 plus x2 over 2. Okay, hopefully there's no argument there. And positive 5 is the y-coordinate of my midpoint, which equals y1 plus y2 over 2. So 5 equals y1 plus y2 over 2. Now, Mr. Rogers, you can't solve that. There's two unknowns in there. Hold on. Are there two unknowns there? I think we know x2, don't we? So we get negative 5 equals x1 plus negative 2. Oh, excuse me. x2 is negative 4. Okay. Over 2. I can solve that. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with our y. 5 equals, we do know y2. So y1 plus negative 2 over 2. Good. Let's keep working on these here. Negative 5 equals x1 plus negative 4 is the same as x1 minus 4 over 2. And likewise, y1 plus negative 2 is the same as y1 minus 2 over 2. How would I solve this for x1? Well, I can just multiply both sides by 2, right? And I'm going to get 2 times negative 5 is negative 10 equals x1 minus 4, and I'll add 4 to both sides. And I'm going to get negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6 for x1. Let's do the same thing for y here. Let's multiply both sides by 2. Okay, let's get those 2's to cancel. 2 times 5 is 10 equals y1 minus 2. And I'll go ahead and add 2 to both sides to get that solved. I get 12 equals y1. So I think the coordinates of point F are negative 6, positive 12. Shall we plot it and see if it works? Negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There is point F. 
Is there a graphical check available to us? Well, these three points better be collinear. Remember that term? They're going to have to be collinear, right? It appears that they are. And there's another graphical check. And this is a graphical method you can use if you ever have this problem with just integer coordinates like this. You can say, going from G to the midpoint, I went over 1, right? Negative 1, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 spaces. So my delta X was negative 1, my delta Y was positive 7, right? I can call this delta X down here. And therefore, to get from the midpoint to the other endpoint, I'm going to have to do that yet again. I'm going to have to go over 1 and up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And I know what you're thinking. Mr. Rogers, why didn't you just show us that the first time? Right? It's because this really is only practical when you're dealing with integer coordinates. When you get into fractional coordinates, you're going to have to do the algebra, which is really good to know how to do anyway. All right, let's try a new idea here. They want us to find the measure of segment AC if B is the midpoint of segment AC. Okay, what do we know about algebra and geometry that could help us solve this? If B is the midpoint, what does that tell me about segment AB and BC? If B is the midpoint, I know these two segments are congruent. Okay? So if BC is 6 minus 3x units long, how long is AB? Likewise, that is going to be 6 minus 3x units long. And now, does anybody see an equation that would help us solve for x? If B is the midpoint, then these three points are collinear, and that means B is between A and C. And if we remember between the points, that tells us that this segment plus this segment must equal that segment when the three points are collinear. So I see an equation. I see 6 minus 3x plus 6 minus 3x must equal the total length of segment AC, which is represented by 14x plus 2. Can we solve that? It's only one variable in there. Shall we combine like terms here? I'd like these 6's to come together. 6 plus 6 is 12. Negative 3x and negative 3x combine to give me negative 6x equals 14x plus 2. Okay. And to solve for x, I think I'm going to go ahead and add 6x to both sides. While I'm also subtracting 2 from both sides. Hopefully that's a shortcut you're familiar with. These 2's disappear over here neatly and these six x's disappear over here 12 minus 2 gives me 10 and 14x plus 6x gives me 20x okay and to solve for x i'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 20 and it looks like i get one half equals x okay before you circle that answer and move on what should you do read the question one more time find the measure of ac okay we didn't do that no, we found x can we find ac now we know ac is going to equal 14x plus 2 so can we go ahead and plug in that one half for x 14 times one half plus 2 14 times a half half of 14 is 7 plus 2 so it turns out that ac is 9 Good. And you could plug in uh, x here, and you would find that a, b, and b, c are each four and a half, which is going to confirm that you did the problem right. All right, this is the last example I'm going to go over. It's very similar to the last problem we did. This is a great place to pause the video and try this yourself if you want to uh, get a sense of how you're doing on this. It wants to find the measure of segment ln if m is the midpoint of segment ln. Okay, now again, if M is the midpoint, there's certain things we know. We know it's halfway between L and N. That means that LM and MN must have the same measure. M bisects LN, that's another way of saying it. 
and therefore I know these two segments are going to be congruent to one another. And that means that if mn is 2a minus 1, well, so is ln. And now hopefully you see an equation. I can add this segment and this segment to get this longer whole segment. Okay? So I could say 2a minus 1 plus 2a minus 1 equals 3a plus 1. Good. Can I combine some like terms over here? 2a plus 2a gives me 4a. Negative 1 plus negative 1 gives me negative 2 equals 3a plus 1. Good. I'm going to go ahead and solve for a by subtracting 3a from both sides. At the same time, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. Okay, those 3a's go away. These 2's cancel. And I'm left with 4a minus 3a is just 1a. And 1 plus 2 is 3. Good. Did I answer the problem? Ah, not quite. They want to know the measure of ln. I know that ln equals 3a plus 1. And now that I know a equals 3, I can go ahead and plug it in. And I'll get 3 times 3 plus 1. And 9 plus 1 is 10. Good. All right, that concludes my two-part lesson on distance and midpoints. I hope you guys found that helpful, and I wish you good luck on the classwork.